Hello everyone, Michael here. So today in this video, we will be going over Amazon's most asked interview question so far in 2024 called length of the longest valid substring. This is a very difficult problem and it's marked as hard on leak code and it involves using a sliding window algorithm. So without further ado, let's jump into this problem. The description says you are given a string word and an array of strings forbidden. A string is called valid if none of its substrings are present in forbidden. Return the length of the longest valid substring of the string word. A substring is a contiguous sequence of characters in a string, possibly empty. So let's look at this example to make sure we understand what we need to do. We need to find the longest substring in Word that has none of its substrings present in forbidden. So I know that might sound confusing. The first time I read this problem, I was really confused. So let's first identify what all of the valid substrings are. So starting with substrings of length one, we have L, E, T, C, O, and D. The only substring that is not valid is character E because that exists in forbidden. So all the other substrings of length one are considered valid. Now substrings of length two, we have L, E, 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 T, T, C, C, O, O, D, and D, E. Looking at substring L, E, this would not be considered valid. Why is that? Well, the substrings of LE would be L, E, and LE itself. E, as we already identified, is not valid because it's in forbidden, which automatically makes LE not valid as well. LE is also in forbidden, so there are two substrings that make this not valid. Substring EE, same thing. E is a substring in EE, so this is not valid. ET is not valid because of the E substring. TC would be valid because all of its substrings are not in forbidden. So TC has the substrings T, C, and TC, and those all don't exist in forbidden. That's why it's valid. And then CO is valid. OD is valid. And then DE is not valid because DE is in forbidden as well as substring E. So we would keep doing this with substrings of length three, then four, then five, all the way up to the length of our word. For this specific example, our answer would be length four, which corresponds to the substring TCOD. And breaking down this substring's substrings, we have T, C, O, D, T, C, C, O, O, D, T, C, O, C, O, D, and TCOD. All of those substrings do not exist in forbidden, which makes TCOD valid, and it happens to be the longest substring that is valid for this input. Now that we understand what the problem is asking us to do, let's jump into the algorithm for this problem. But before we do, I wanted to mention my algorithm prep website, Algos with Michael. If you're preparing for technical interviews, I highly recommend you check it out. I take a pattern focused approach where I teach you several categories of problems including binary search, top K element, and sliding window problems. Specifically for my YouTube audience, you guys get a discount using the code ALGOHELP. So for this problem, our brute force approach would be to calculate all substrings in Word, then for each of those substrings, calculate all of its substrings and compare them to the words in Forbidden. This is obviously extremely slow and would never be accepted in a big tech interview, but thinking about this solution does give us some insight as to how to do it more optimally. So going back to our previous example using this approach, let's say we generate the substring LE and we verify it's invalid. If we implement this brute force approach, we would generate LEE, L-E-E-T, L-E-E-T-C, L-E-E-T-C-O, L-E-E-T-C-O-D, and leak code. This is a complete waste of time because we already have verified L-E is not valid, right? And L-E is a substring of all of those substrings. To get around this pitfall, let's look at the optimized approach. Just like all sliding window algorithms, we need to initialize a left and right pointer. However, instead of initializing them to zero, they are going to be set to the last index in Word, which is seven. We're doing this because we want to iterate backwards instead of forward. And you're gonna see why we do this soon. Also, one thing to mention, 
is that our left and right pointer represent the bounds of a substring in Word. And this is prevalent for all sliding window algorithms. We're also gonna need a max length variable to keep track of the maximum valid substring that we come across. Now, what we wanna do is starting at our left pointer, iterate up to our right pointer, and for each iteration, we're gonna check if the substring is valid or not. Pretty simple. The substring we are looking at is character E, which is forbidden. A critical part of this optimized algorithm and the reason why we are iterating backwards is since we just identified this current substring is invalid, we want to move our right pointer back by one. You can think of the right pointer as the limit as to what we will iterate up to. We know that anything past this index will be invalid. So we never have to check it again. So our right pointer gets moved to index six. Since we identified an invalid substring, we're also going to decrease our left pointer. Once again, starting at our left pointer, we iterate up to our right pointer. And we're looking at substring D, and that is valid because D does not exist in forbidden. So now we can compute our new max length which is just right minus left plus one. So right minus left plus one is the length of our substring, which evaluates to one. So that is our new max length. The reason why we do plus one here, by the way, is because our left and right pointers are indices. They're zero based, but we're computing a length. So we offset the indices by one. And then once again, we're going to decrease our left pointer. So we iterate between our left and right pointer. The new substring that we're looking at is character O. O is valid because it doesn't exist in forbidden, but our max length is gonna remain at one. And then we move forward and compute our new substring, which is OD. And once again, that is valid. And notice that we know this substring is valid without checking all of its substrings because we already checked the substring D and the substring O previously. We only need to check if substring OD is forbidden, which it is not. So you can see why now we are iterating backwards instead of forwards. It allows us to not have to recompute results like we had to do in the brute force approach. So our max length then becomes two because right minus left plus one now equals two. Also notice that we don't need to check anything past our right index because if we included the character index seven, that would make the substring invalid, right? Because we already identified character E is invalid, it's in forbidden. So we don't even need to check that index ever again. Now our left pointer is gonna decrease again and our new substring that we're looking at is character C. C is valid, but it's not greater than our current max length. Moving forward, our new substring we're looking at is CO. CO is valid, it's not in forbidden, and that is the same length as max length. Moving forward again, our new substring is COD. COD is valid. Right minus left plus one equals three. That's the length of this substring. So our max length changes to three. Since we updated our max length, we're going to decrease our left pointer again and iterate between our left and right pointer. Our new substring we're looking at is character T. T is valid but it's not greater than max length. Moving forward, we're looking at the substring TC, which is valid. Once again, it's not greater than our current max. Now we're looking at TCO substring. That is valid, and that's the same length as our max length of three. Moving forward again, we're looking at the substring TCOD, which is valid. So we're gonna compute our substring length, right minus left plus one, which is four. So our max length becomes four. Once again, I'm gonna point this out just to be clear because I know this problem is confusing. Since we are iterating backwards, we already know that all of the substrings of TCOD are valid. So in previous iterations, we checked the substrings T, C, O, D, T, C, C, O, O, D, T, C, O, and C, O, D. All of those were checked in previous iterations. So that's why we only have to check TCOD. And now our left pointer decreases again, and the new substring we're looking at is character E. Character E is invalid, so we don't have to check any of these other substrings for this iteration. 
So since we found an invalid substring, we can move our right pointer in front of the invalid substring that we just identified. Remember that our right pointer is the limit as to what we iterate up to. So it becomes one. And then we're also going to decrease our left pointer again. And the current substring we're looking at is once again, character E, which is invalid because that exists in forbidden. So our right pointer should move in front of this invalid substring. So it's going to move to index zero. And then our left pointer is also going to decrease to index zero. The substring we're looking at now is character L and L is valid, but it's not greater than our current max length. And now we're done. We iterated through all the relevant substrings and found an answer of four. All right, let's go over the code for this solution. So we are given a string word as input and then a list of strings forbidden as input. So the first thing we should do is just convert this list of strings to a set of strings because we're going to want to compare different substrings in forbidden. So it makes sense to just have a constant lookup time. And now we're going to initialize a left and right pointer. And just like we talked about, they're going to be initialized to the very last index in word. And then we're also going to have a variable max length. So the first thing we want to do is we want to iterate backwards, right? So our exit condition for our initial loop is when our left pointer becomes negative one. If it's greater than negative one, then we know we can continue our algorithm. And now what we want to do is loop from our left to our right pointer like we talked about. So I know this looks confusing because why the heck am I doing left plus nine? I didn't mention this in the algorithm portion because I felt like it would have just been way more confusing. So math.min between right and left plus nine. Why am I doing that? This has to be done to handle the edge case where our word input is just massive. So on most test cases, you could just get around with doing I is less than or equal to right. But in the scenario that our word is just really large, we are going to have to loop over so many different characters and compute so many different substrings that you'll eventually get a time limit exceeded. But the reason why we do left plus nine is because if you look at the constraints, you can see that the length of forbidden, so the length of all of the strings in forbidden, never exceed a size of 10. So we can use that to our advantage and minimize the amount that we loop up to. So we just always minimize it between right and left plus nine. So what this means is that this for loop will never run more than 10 times. If we didn't do this math.min, there is a chance it could run a lot more than 10 times and cause that time limit exceeded. But this doesn't really affect anything uh, in the algorithm that we talked about. It just changes how many times we loop. So with that out of the way, the next thing we need to do is compute our substring, right? So our substring is going to be between our left pointer and then whatever current index that we are at. So that would be I plus one. And then we are going to check if that substring that we just generated is inside of the invalid hash set. Uh, if it is, that means that we need to move our right pointer like we talked about. We need to decrease the limit that we will loop up to. So our right pointer would be reassigned to I minus one. So we're essentially just moving our right pointer to be right in front of the invalid substring that we just found. And then we can immediately break because we know that any substrings after this point for this iteration will not be valid as well. And then when we exit this for loop, we compute our new max length. And just like we talked about to get the length of the substring, we just do right minus left plus one. And then notice we're also decreasing uh, our left pointer on each iteration. And then finally, we just return max length. So let's submit to make sure this works. 
And also just to show you this time limit exceeded exception, I changed the for loop to be I is less than or equal to right. So we're no longer doing math.min between right and then left plus nine. So what this means is this for loop could run or it will run a lot more than 10 times. So if we submit again, you can see that we get this time limit exceeded exception because the inputted word is just freaking gigantic. So yeah, it's just an edge case you have to handle. The time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of N times M squared, where N is the length of word and M is the length of the largest string in forbidden. So let's break this down further. So we have a while loop first, right? And we loop backwards, starting from the last index all the way up to index zero. That is what takes big O of n time, right? That's the length of word. That that's part's pretty easy. Now, as for the for loop, the nested for loop, we are running it up to math.min between right and left plus nine. Since we have the constraint that the, the strings in forbidden will be a maximum of 10 characters, this means that this for loop will never run more than 10 times. What that also means is on line 11, where we generate a substring, the substring will never be greater than 10 characters. So the for loop takes big O of M time, and then the generation of the substring takes big O of M time. So that's where we get the M squared. However, since M is just equal to 10, you can essentially rewrite this as big O of N times 10 squared which is big O of 100 N, and then you just drop the constant, so you just get big O of N. So it's a linear time complexity algorithm when you consider these constraints. Now, if I were in an interview, I would mention that, but I would still say this algorithm is big O of N times M squared, because if you didn't have these constraints, that's what it would be. As for our space complexity, space complexity is a lot easier. We do initialize a set and we add all of those strings in forbidden into this set. So we can just say it's big O of N where N is the number of forbidden strings. And that is how you solve length of the longest valid substring. I really hope that this made sense for you guys. I know this is a really hard problem, but if you're planning to interview at Amazon, it's a very useful problem to know because they ask it a lot. Don't forget to check out my website, Al Goes With Michael. I have a whole sliding window course, a top K element course, a binary search course, and then I'm also going to be releasing a graph related course uh, pretty soon uh, in this year. So yeah, definitely check it out if you're interested. And with that, I will catch you guys next time. Have a great day.